Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. Uh, we have uh, an interesting case that just dropped uh, coming out of Hawaii and to take a look at it today, uh, we have brought back our uh, volunteer CRPA president, Chuck Michelle. Chuck, thank you very much for being with us today. Always a pleasure, fellas. Thanks for having me and thanks for getting the word out. Thank you, absolutely. But before we get into that today, please be sure and like, share, and subscribe to these videos. It really helps us with the algorithms and getting this information out there to as many people as possible. And with that, again, before we get into it, let's uh, go ahead and hear a word from our sponsor of this video. As the trusted financial partner for 70 years to law enforcement and their families, your membership helps continue the support of law enforcement officers throughout the state. As a member, you'll have access to all member benefits, including checking accounts with ATM fee rebates and no monthly fees, certificates with highly competitive rates, auto loans, home loans, online technology with 24-7 banking convenience, and much more. And don't forget, the credit union is now extending memberships to CRPA members. So join today at www.thepolicecreditunion.org. The link will be in the description below and continue to discover the benefits of membership while supporting law enforcement officers today. All right, Chuck. So uh, this is actually really exciting because this is uh, something that, you know, we have been working on here in California you know, we've talked about Senate Bill 918 from last year. We've got Senate Bill 2 this year. It's essentially the same bill. It's looking at some CCW uh, requirements as well as the sensitive places uh, that it looks to create here in California. What we don't necessarily talk about is that last year, while California failed to pass that bill, other states did. And uh, uh, Hawaii, Hawaii was one of them. So uh, essentially what you're seeing is a futuristic picture of California with SB2 if it passes. But Hawaii got some challenges to these laws that they implemented last year. Uh, and this is the decision that we see. But before I get your take on it, Chuck, I just want to read this because, you know, you have a, an Obama appointed judge out of Hawaii saying something that you wouldn't necessarily uh, expect. So Jacob, if you can pull this up, uh, from the decision, the 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 judge says it uh, it follows that there's nothing in the Second Amendment's plain text that makes a distinction between public places. The Second Amendment's plain text, therefore, also naturally encompasses places that are generally held open to the public. To be sure, Bruin uniformly rejected the respondents' arguments that the state is permitted to condition handgun carrying in areas frequented by the general public on showing of a non-speculative need for armed self-defense in those areas. Basically saying, look, Bruin went over this. Uh, you can't create these sensitive places and, and prohibit people from carrying uh, in public areas. So Chuck, if you can kind of take us through this, maybe from the beginning uh, and you know what this decision means. And I'm also curious, you know, do you expect this to get appealed to the Ninth Circuit? Well, the quick answer to that last one is I'm certain it will be appealed to the Ninth Circuit, but they still have to go through some, uh, this was a, basically a, a preliminary injunction, a, a temporary restraining order. So they have to get, they have to finalize that in the, in the uh, district court first. But keep in mind, after Bruin came down, uh, all the anti-gun owner states went crazy. Uh, they became, they're very angry. They were very vindictive. In a number of different states, New York, New Jersey, California, uh, some others, passed these laws to try and get around Bruin, where they tried to make it harder to get a concealed carry permit. And then once you had one, they tried to make it useless by making every place where you might need to carry it a sensitive place where CCWs were invalid. So uh, New York's was immediately challenged and mostly lost. That's now in the Second Circuit. Uh, California didn't, didn't, wasn't able to pass there. So they had SB 918 yet last year, which failed by one vote. Uh, and, but now they have SB 2 back this year. They, they removed the urgency clause, which would have required, which last year required a two thirds vote. Uh, so that it only requires a majority vote. So SB 2 is probably going to pass in California. And then Hawaii passed their ban on in their, their law that invalidates uh, licensed carry permits uh, in 
all the sensitive areas that they designated, which were most public areas. Now you gotta, oh, and then one other twist on this, and this is what they really love to do. Uh, they put in a, a, like a vampire provision where if you do, if, if you're a, if you're a business owner and your business is open to the public, if you want to let people with a CCW come into your business, the state law was going to require you to put up a guns allowed sign. That's that turns the right on its head. You, you don't you don't post, uh, uh, you know, trespassing OK signs or uh, soliciting OK signs. You post no trespassing or no hunting or no soliciting signs. And so if somebody who owns a private business and that's open to the public wants to put up a sign that says no guns allowed, that's their right. That's not the government taking action. That's a private individual with a property right expressing his private right to restrict his private property. Uh, but they want to turn it on its head and make people post this guns allowed sign because they know nobody's going to do that because uh, they'd be afraid of criticisms. They'd afraid that people who don't understand that CCW holders make us more safe, not less, uh, won't, won't come into the store. So uh, that's, that's the same gambit, the same strategic approach that, uh, that the other states have taken. They pay lip service to the Second Amendment. They feign that they're going to, to comply with Bruin, but they're actually pushing the envelope as hard as they can to, to make Bruin and a CCW useless. So Hawaii was immediately challenged. And just the other day, and, and in the process, the Second Amendment Law Center and the CRPA filed an amicus brief, along with our, a, a number of our strategic partners, GOC, GOA, uh, uh, Second Amendment Foundation also filed a brief of its own. Amicus briefs, the amicus brief campaigns in these cases, that's why the Second Amendment Foundation, the Second Amendment Law Center exists because they're so important. So we filed this amicus brief and uh, uh, the, the district court uh, two days ago now uh, ruled that the, most of the Hawaii sensitive places restrictions were unconstitutional and they violated the Second Amendment. And this is by an Obama appointee, by the way. Now, interestingly and significantly, in her opinion, the judge quoted from the CRPA amicus brief, because this is what amicus briefs can do. You can add more color to a case by including things that there's not room to put into the party's main brief. And so we talked about how in multiple jurisdictions throughout the country that have liberalized CCW laws, uh, CCW holders are a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction, like less than 1% of the folks who commit gun crimes in those states. Because think about it. I mean, if you go to the trouble of getting a license, you're not a gangbanger. You're not some crazy person who's trying to go out and, and commit crimes. Uh, so the court took notice of that and quoted our amicus brief about the Texas CCW holder crime rate and pointed out this is why you know the state cannot justify its argument that you have to uh, restrict all these places where CCWs are valid in the interest of public safety. So uh, it was a it's a it's a good win, and we have I've already sent it to uh, Sam Paredes and Rick Travis, the CRPA lobbyist and the GOC lobbyist in Sacramento. They'll be using it. They're sending it out to all the the legislators who are thinking about voting for SB two, and. Uh, you know, we will, we, we will be now using this in other jurisdictions where they try and uh, pass or enforce a sensitive places ban. So that, that's obviously great. Now we have uh, just another tool to use in advocating here in California against SB2 as the deadline comes down for them to, uh, to vote on it. What do you see the path uh, of this going? Uh, you know, you, you have the, the Ninth Circuit. You said initially that it was likely to be appealed to once it, once it was settled where it's at. Uh, do you see a similar decision coming out of the Ninth Circuit? Is this something that has the potential to go all the way up to the Supreme Court? It, uh, it has the potential, but probably not, not through the Ninth Circuit. Interestingly enough, the Ninth Circuit just came out with a decision also out of Hawaii, because Hawaii had a ban on possessing butterfly knives, you know, the knives that you can flip open, they have two handles and, and uh, the handle splits and becomes the, 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 the shield that the, the knife goes in splits and you hold that handle. And anyway, it's more like a pocket knife, the court held, than a uh, really like a Derringer or excuse me, a, a, a Bowie knife or something like that. And so the state was arguing, well, they regulated Bowie, not Bowie knives 
And so we should be able to regulate knives in general. And the court said, no, this is a different kind of knife and a different kind of way they're possessed. But the, the key thing, again, remember I was talking about methodology, the Ninth Circuit case, and it's a three to nothing, three judge panel ruling, um, applied the right Bruin methodology in reaching this decision that uh, Bowie knives, a ban on Bowie knives was unconstitutional. And so now uh, that will become the standard, the methodology that will be applied because Hawaii is in the Ninth Circuit too, when they take this sensitive places test uh, case up to the Ninth Circuit. So that's good news. The Ninth Circuit got it right. And now they'll, they may try and take it on bonk because, you know, some of those judges don't like to get it right. Uh, but uh, uh, it's going to be tough because there's three judges. So three judges, unanimous. Uh, so but we'll have to see. But in the meantime, right now, there's good precedent in the Ninth Circuit, circuit for the Bruin test to be uh, being applied faithfully not overreading what arms, what is or is not an arm, a protected arm, and not stretching to find historical analogs in, in, in old laws and saying, oh yeah, that's the same. You know, they're trying to argue that a, that a regulation, not a ban on Bowie knives, something that says you can't carry it here, there, or that, but you know, there, it's never said you can't have one. Uh, they're saying, the states are trying to argue that that shows why you can ban semi-automatic firearms and magazines that hold over 10 rounds. That's a stretch. That is not the same kind of a law. It's not done for the same reason, and it's not done in the same way. And that's the, the uh, test the Supreme Court advocates. You have to look at the how and the why of the historical law to see if they were addressing the same kind of societal problem and how they addressed it, and then that would be an analog. So I'm getting a little into the legal weeds here, but the point is Ninth Circuit got that right. And if, if the Hawaii Sensitive Places case comes goes up through the Ninth Circuit, uh, it will likely have to face, face the same type of methodology. And so will uh, uh, CRPA's challenge to SB2, because they're going to pass that. That's Newsom's baby. And we already have the lawsuit ready uh, the, the day he signs it. In fact, we're probably going to file it a couple of days before he signs it and send it out to all the media that he is going to hold his press conference for so that the day that he announces he signed this law, we'll announce that we've sued him over it. Well, I seem to be hearing that a lot, and I think this is actually a great example, this Wolford v. Lopez uh, lawsuit coming out of Hawaii, uh, that these courts are getting it right. And I, I hate to harp on this because I know we spent a long time, especially when the— with the well, yeah, when the when the Bruin decision came out, uh, it, are these just uh, continued wonderful consequences of the Bruin decision? Is the Bruin decision just sort of forcing these courts to get it right now? Is that what we're going to continue seeing? Well, the Bruin decision is forcing some. The same thing happened in Heller. After Heller came down, all the states twisted it. And the lawyers went to work. Bloomberg's legal team came up with some creative arguments about what Heller meant in their view, which is not what Heller ever meant. And so lots of laws were upheld as constitutional, even though they shouldn't have been. Well, Bruin took, took a look at that and said, you guys have been applying Heller all wrong. And here's how you're supposed to apply it. And here's how the tests work. Uh, Two-step test, does the language of the Second Amendment cover it? If so, state has to show there's a historical analog that, that tells us the, the founders would have tolerated whatever modern day law is being challenged. Well, They've already distorted that, twisted it around, and a lot of courts are getting it wrong. And that's why you're seeing some courts upholding bans on semi-automatics and, and standard capacity magazines, because they're applying the Bruin test wrong. They're going so far as to say, you know, uh, there's a, you know, Heller decided that handguns, which were in common use for self-defense, can't be banned, like the Washington, D.C. ordinance that was challenging Heller did. So there's this common use test. If the if a gun is in common use because Americans have chosen it for self-defense or other purposes, hunting, sport, target shooting, whatever, um, then it's protected. But they're trying to now argue that use means you actually have had to shoot the gun, shoot at someone to use it to defend yourself. Or I suppose with a butterfly knife, stab someone in order to... Uh, you know, actually use it as opposed to show it, you know, guns are a deterrent. Most of the time, as soon as a bad guy comes in and you say, I have a gun or here's that 
uh, round uh, uh, chamber, they run away. It, it's a deterrent effect. That's how you use them. It deters crime. It's not like you have to, 90, 99% of the time, it's never fired. That's why, it, that's why these uh, uses, self-defense uses don't make the papers because nobody got hurt. Uh, so, uh, but that's the kind of issue. That's the kind of hair splitting that the states try to do to twist, they, to twist the heller initially and now to twist Bruin so that more laws will be upheld. And some courts, some judges are buying into it. Well, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. We don't focus on these things too often, but uh, seeing something from out of state end up having a direct positive impact here in California is definitely refreshing. Chuck, thank you very much for coming on and giving us the lay of the land on this one. My pleasure, guys. I'd be happy to come back anytime. Well, thank you very much. And in case you missed it at the beginning of the video, again, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. We're trying to get uh, the algorithms to work for us and get this information out to as many people as possible, and every single one of those subscriptions helps. So thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.